What are tannins and why would I want to add them to my fish tank? Well today we'll discuss the pros and the cons of adding tannins to your tank water, uh, where to source them. There are products you can buy but there's also some free and easy ways to get them locally. How to add tannins to your tank water but also how to remove them in case you add more than you want or you, you just decide you don't want tannins at all. So what are tannins anyway? Well, tannins are a chemical compound that are found throughout the plant kingdom and they are present in the living tissues of plants, in the leaves, in the sticks, in the bark, in the wood, in the seed pods. And, and their purpose is to help protect the living tissues of plants from infection and disease from rotting, basically. Near bodies of water where these parts of the plant that I mentioned fall into the water, over time, these tannins will leach out into the water and can cause very noticeable water discoloration. The most tangible examples of this are coffee and tea. It's why these drinks are so dark in color and also why they taste bitter. Well, all throughout the world, in lakes and ponds and river systems and swamps, uh, they are, these are tannin-rich environments and are teeming with aquatic life. So why would I want to add leaves and sticks and seed pods to my fish tank? Well, there are pros and cons to adding these botanicals and ultimately the tannins that they produce into your aquarium water, mostly pros in my opinion, but let's go over those right now. Some of the pros are that humic acid and tannic acid both of which are part of the chemical compound of tannins, uh, have antifungal, antibacterial, and antioxidant properties in fish. So if a fish is injured or stressed out or gets fin rot, as an example, it is much better equipped to heal with tannins in the water. Now there is a whole range of scientific studies done on this subject that is available to read on Google Scholar if you want to check those out. Botanicals in the aquarium uh, helps promote biodiversity by providing a food source for various microorganisms which help break down the waste but also become a food source themselves to the fish, especially to fry. Tannins can help lower pH levels, making water more acidic which is helpful if you're keeping fish that come from these natural habitats that are tannin rich and acidic. Fish like tetras, uh, discus, even bettas, and so many more. They can prevent algae growth by subduing the light levels in the water, making it more difficult for algae to get the light that it needs in order to grow. In general, tannins just help create a more naturalistic environment in our tanks. Uh, natural bodies of water are not always crystal clear like we tend to want our aquariums to be. And the more we can emulate natural environments, the happier and healthier our fish are likely to be. Some of the cons to having tannins in the water are that it makes the water too dark for many types of submerged aquarium plants to grow. They can't get the light that they need. And there's a way to bypass this altogether, of course, by growing houseplants out of your fish tank, which I can show you how to do if you're interested. But it can also darken the water to the point where it makes it difficult to see certain species of fish. They may feel safer in darker water, but it's hard to see them and you can't really enjoy them to the extent that you otherwise would. Uh, tannins can also lower the pH too much in the water if, if the tannins are concentrated enough in the water, which can be problematic for many species of fish like swordtails and mollies, platys, and, and others as well, but also for snails and shrimp, which they benefit from tannins, but they also need a higher mineral content to maintain their shells and exoskeletons, which is why it's good to have something like crushed coral or lime or uh, oyster grit mixed into the substrate to act as a buffer against the pH dropping too low. So where do I get tannins for my aquarium? As I mentioned earlier, the tannins come from the botanical items of plants like dead and dried leaves and sticks and seed pods, and etc. Uh, many of which are available to purchase online like alder cones 
or Indian almond leaves, various types of driftwood, but there are free local sources that may be available to you. Personally, I live near a lot of trees, so I can collect fallen leaves from oak and magnolia, beech, hornbeam trees, to name a few. I collect seed pods from magnolia trees and uh, acorn caps, not the acorns, but just the, the caps from all the oak trees around. I cut and cure my own driftwood over time, or I can find more ready-to-use sources of driftwood from a local creek or even a reservoir that I live close to. And of course, some of the dead leaves from the house plants growing in my fish tank, I can, when they're dead and dried, I can put them back in the water. I do recommend staying away from evergreen conifer species of trees like pine or spruce or cedar, mostly because of their sap content. Uh, when I'm selecting pieces of driftwood, I try to find pieces that are aged and weathered that have been exposed to the elements even pieces that are sun bleached and dried out. Make sure to avoid the soft rotten wood or wood that has not been weathered and matured into that uh, driftwood status. Well, now let's go over how to add these botanicals to your aquarium. Most importantly, make sure the pieces that you've chosen are completely dead and dried out before adding them to your tank. Uh, living plant tissue contains nitrogen which when added to your fish tank can turn into ammonia, which of course is toxic to your aquatic livestock. But if the pieces are dead and dried, then there's, there's no more or there's very little nitrogen left in them and it's safe to add to the tank. Some people like to boil their botanicals in order to sanitize them, especially driftwood, but also to remove any excess tannins uh, personally, I don't like to boil mine because I want to introduce biodiversity into my tanks because that leads to a stable environment long term. So instead of boiling, I will soak my botanicals, especially driftwood, uh, for a time to remove any excess tannins and it gives me a chance to keep an eye on them to, make, to see if anything questionable starts happening. And sure, there is a risk of introducing something potentially harmful to your tank which is why I think it's important to only, only select botanicals that come from a balanced, healthy ecosystem to begin with. I make a point to add botanicals slowly to my tanks in order to avoid any potential fluctuations in pH, but also just to catch any potential problems in general. If my fish gets sick or if there's an abnormal rise in nitrates, for example, shortly after adding certain botanicals, then I'll have a better idea of what caused it if I'm adding them slowly. Now, thankfully, I've not had this happen before, but I think it is a precaution that's worth taking. What if I add more tannins than I really want in the tank, or I just decide I don't want botanicals all over my substrate, or I just want a brighter tank in general? Well, the quickest way to remove tannins is, of course, a water change and also just removing the botanicals from your tank. But just make sure to do this slowly over time to avoid any sudden changes in water chemistry. And using activated charcoal in your filter will also remove tannins over time. But livestock can still benefit from even small amounts of tannin in the water. You can soak some leaves or seed pods in a separate container and make your own tea. Or you can just use rooibos tea, which is a good safe tannin source, and that way you can add small amounts to your tank and have a better level of control for the amount of tannins in your water. Currently I have one black water tank loaded with tannins, but I still have some botanicals in other tanks that are not black water. I just add them slowly and in small amounts over time. And this controls the tannin levels, but still gives the fish some of the health benefits. Well, that's some of the basics about tannins and botanicals in a fish tank. And hopefully we answered some of your questions or concerns on this topic. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. Be sure to hit that like button if you found this content helpful. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.